Genesis 15, verse 4. I'm going to read it. I'm going to go old King James here, so put it on the screen for me. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, This one shall not be thine heir. Did you notice that? Sometimes we can think we have a seed, we have a harvest, but we really have a seed. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall thine heir be. And go to verse 5. There's a reason I'm going old school here. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven. Look. Look toward heaven. Tell the stars. One translation says count the stars. And that's what that means actually. If thou be able to number them. And he said to him, watch this. Read this with me. So shall thy seed be. He said, I want you to look up at the stars, count them, because really you're not counting stars, you're counting seed. Y'all ain't ready for this today. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him. One translation says he was credited to his account. Righteousness. I want to talk to you the next few minutes on the power of seeing your seed. Seeing your seed. In, in our reading, God takes Abraham. Notice where he takes him. He takes him outside the tent. Because any great thing God ever wants to do in your life, he's always going to stretch you beyond your comfort zone. He's always going to stretch you beyond your tent. Your, your family, us four and no more. Because anything he wants to do in you, he also wants to do through you. So he doesn't want to be about your tent. He wants to take you outside the tent. He does that. He tells them, look up at the stars. And, and, and another place, he tells them to also look down at the sand and count the sand in the seashore, the, gra the grains. And he said, if you can count them. In other words, what's the point there? There are times when you're serving God that you're going to be looking up. And there are times that you're going to be discouraged and looking down. And he wanted to remind Abraham he's the same God on the mountaintop as he is in the valley. He's the same God when everything's going great as he is when things are not so great. He said, to go outside the tent. Count the stars. He said, Show, so shall be your seed. But notice this. Before God ever did it for Abraham, he first needed Abraham to see it. He did see it. He believed God. Don't miss this. That's another word for he trusted God. He believed God before it happened. And it was credited to him as righteousness. Throughout the scriptures, we see a trend where our faith and our trust in God goes into a heavenly banking account. This is scripture. If you go to Revelations 5 and verse 8, John the Revelator says, I had a vision. The angel was taking me through heaven, and he saw a big bowl up in heaven. He said, what's that? He said, that's golden bowls, which are the prayers of the saints. Anytime you trust God and believe God, it doesn't just like you spit in the wind, well, I prayed, and that's over. No, our, we die, but our prayers never die. They go up into a heavenly account. The Bible says he was credited as righteousness it was a credit to his account as he was praying as he was believing as he was trusting oh you don't believe me second corinthians chapter 9 paul said i'm not he was trying to raise money for his ministry and everybody thought he's just all about money he said oh wait a second i'm not looking for anything to be added to my account i'm looking read it second corinthians 9 i think around verse 6 or 7 he said i'm looking at what can be credited to your account in Acts chapter 10, verse 4, the, the angel came to Cornelius and God told Cornelius, Cornelius, I've heard your prayers, your prayers and your offerings 
have come up as a memorial before me. So when we trust God, when we believe God, it's way more than about money. It's way more than going to church and paying my tithes and serving a little bit, shaking the preacher's hand and going to eat fried chicken. It's about trusting him with everything in my life. And when I can come unabandoned and say, God, all I got is yours, yes. Now what's the question? When you get to that point, be ready because he's about to ambush you in a good way of blessings and overflow because he wants to do all things good in your life above all things I would that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers I know the plans I have for you says the Lord plans to prosper you not to harm you but to give you hope in the future but the problem is not on his end the problem is our ability to trust him when we can't trace him and many times we never experience all that God wants to do in and through us. And it's not because he doesn't want to do it. It's because we can't see our seed. I preached a message, a series, about seven or eight straight weeks last fall. And I preached it about tithing, not money. Tithing, not generosity. Tithing, because tithing is not being generous. You're not a giver because you... Pay 10% to the church. That's just giving back what God says already is mine. Tithing is New Testament as well as Old Testament. Tithing is under grace as much as it is law. That you hear all the kickbacks from stingy people, you know, that try to rationalize. It. And I preached something seven or eight straight Sundays, and not one person did I hear uh, pushback from. Not even a rumor. In fact, it was just the opposite. I've never felt like I helped so many people than I did with that one series. You can go back to the archives. It's called The Game Changer. And it was all about the tithe, giving God the first of all of your, of everything, not just money, but your increase. I recommend you see it or listen to it and watch it. But today, I feel like I'm going to take you to a whole other dimension, if you'll let me. This thing I hold in my hand right here has, got, has great potential. This is a seed. You can't hardly see it. Maybe in the second service for the people online, you can get close up to it. But this is a seed. It's hard to believe that this can produce this. But it can. But here's the problem. Many times, there are areas in our lives that we fail to put this in its rightful place. And it's not because we're not good people. We just can't see our seed. See. Can you see what God wants to do in your life? We can't see the fruit being born. I mean, after all, it's under the ground. And if you dig it up and look at it every day, it's never going to take root. If you've got to go over there and see, is it working? Like Kathy Hayes, you say, when she was a girl, when they talked about sowing seed in church, she really thought it was like, and she said, well, I, I sowed seed. And she'd go out, her dad was a farmer, and want to go out and dig it up every day to see if it's working. It don't work like that. You have to trust the process. And sometimes you're not going to see the seed working. Now, just relax. I ain't talking about just money. I'm talking about your prayer life. I'm talking about your word life. I'm talking about coming to church. And a lot of times you go into a dark place and you can't see. And the devil works in the dark and he begins to discourage you with doubt and unbelief. And you can't see it working. And it's in those times that you have to trust the process to know that if I sowed seed, I don't know when. I don't know how all that down there works. I just know that eventually it's going to produce a harvest. We don't see it working. We don't see how. A lot of times, like, I don't see how I could give uh, toward the Imagine uh, a journey. I don't know how I could give toward building God a house. I'm barely making ends meet myself. And we don't see how we could sow a seed. After all, we only have one tiny seed. Pastor Rich, you need a lot of money. You need $10 million. No, I just need God to be faithful. I don't know what I need. I just need to know I need to trust God whether it's 10 million or 100 million. We trust him. 
You need a lot of seed. All I got is one little seed. That ain't going to work. When when you understand in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I believe it's verse 6, Paul said he gives seed to the sower. So if you don't have seed, we can't go against the word now. Come on, it's tight but right. You listening to me? Maybe the reason you're broke and you're not sowing seed, you don't have seed, is because you're not a sower. Because if you're sowing, you're growing. It's quiet in here. Well, I'm broke. Probably because you're stingy. Probably because of what you have, you're not sowing. I'm, I'm not judging. I'm messing with you a little bit, but it's the truth. A lot of times, because the Bible makes it very clear. If you sow, you shall reap. And he gives seed to the who? To the sower. It don't mean you got to sow a million dollars when you ain't even got a, 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 you know, a hundred. But you got three dollars for the, for the espresso tomorrow morning. You got, you got, you know, at ten bucks or eight bucks. They call it Starbucks for a reason. It's expensive and. Well, I don't have seed. Oh, you can make you some Folgers or Maxwell House. Come on, we, we got the seed. I don't have the seed. You got you a brand new Bentley. But we don't have seed for God's house. Just telling you, if you want to grow, you got to sow. That's good preaching, Richie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We don't, we don't see We don't see the potential. A lot of times we don't see the potential in our seed. We're like, after all, where'd it go? I can't already find it. We don't even see the potential in our seed. This is so small. Pastor Rich, you've got to be on drugs, man. That can't produce anything. But when you begin to look around, you see the product of what this can do when you trust the process and put it in the right place. I'm preaching. Come on, are you receiving like I'm preaching? Because I'm anointed right now. I wanna, are you anointed? Because if you trust the process and put it in the right place, you see the potential. And I just want to tell you, I'm a tree. If you don't see potential, look at me. Because I am a sower, and therefore that's why I am a grower. I wonder if there's anybody that could testify in here that God gives back good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I wonder if there are any trees in here that would testify of God's goodness to say, hey, if you haven't seen it, look at me. I'm potential. We don't see the purpose. Well, this is here and now. I don't see the purpose. Why would I sow my seed? I don't see the purpose. Watch this now. The purpose is the harvest. The reason you sow this little seed is to produce a harvest. The purpose is not to build a big building down the street. The purpose is not to see how much money we can raise and break you and make you miserable for two years and bitter at the preacher. That's not the, the purpose is a harvest. Now watch this. When you connect the dots and understand the purpose is not only the harvest in others, but the harvest in you. Because when you give, it comes back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together. And that's not just money. That's in every area of life. So not only are you sowing and growing to produce a harvest out there, but you are setting the atmosphere and the temperature for your home when you sow and you trust God. God has a way of blessing those kids. He has a way of blessing that paycheck. He has a way of blessing your life in every way. I thought about God planted a tree. And I don't know how many years it took for it to grow, but one day it grew and a man went outside to chop a tree down because he needed wood because God said it was about to rain. And he took his sons and they went tree chopping. And they cut those trees down and they built a big old boat with it. And that boat saved them and their family all because God planted a tree before the need. 
Here to remind somebody, you're not praying and having to achieve and get anything. You don't have to strive to get the victory. You're fighting from a place of victory. I told you last week, your big brother Jesus already whipped the bully on the playground. All you got to do is keep running that mouth. He got you. If any man says to this mountain, be removed, cast into the sea, it shall be done. If, he, you know, if you're weak, say I'm strong. If you're poor, say I'm rich. All you got to do is keep talking because your big brother Jesus already whipped the bully. It's already done. So he provided a tree before the need. And they were rescued. God planted a tree. Hundreds of years. I don't know how many years it took. Jesus was walking through a village. And there was a short man that wanted to see Jesus. Talk about the purpose. Why, why are we so in seed? Why are we building a building? Why are we doing all? He, he walked in that day and said, I can't see Jesus. I need to see Jesus. But before he had a need, God had planted a tree. God planted a seed. He, the tree grew. And a guy named Zacchaeus, who was always last. Come on, short people. You know what I mean? You're always last to dinner. You're, you're always last in the race. You're always last to be picked for basketball. Come on. I feel you. Last, he was lost. He was a sinner, lost as a goat. He was a tax collector. He was wicked. He was evil. He would rob from the poor and keep the money. And he was last. He was lost. He was least. He was, he was a sinner, but he wanted to see Jesus. And because that tree had been planted years prior, Zach was elevated. To a place to see Jesus in a way that he normally would have never saw him. Stay with me. And then Jesus said, I want to go to your house. Not the preacher's house. I'm coming to your house. Come on, you remember the old little kids church song, right? Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was. Remember? He climbed upon the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to. See? Yeah, you got it. And so Zacchaeus said, come on in, Jesus. Jesus never asked Zacchaeus for anything. He just touched his heart. And when he touched his heart, oh, Zach said, I want to give half of what I have to Jesus Christ International, the ministry. Read it. He said, I want to give half of what I have to, to, to the poor and to the people who need it. I want to give it to the ministry. Notice that tree was not planted just for Zacchaeus, but it was the gift that kept on giving. A, a rich man got saved, got into the house of God, and he continued the ministry. I, I thought about how God planted another tree. The, the, this is just, again, the purpose of what we're doing. He planted a tree, and a few years go by, and that tree grows, and some Roman soldiers needed a cross. They cut that tree down, and they split it in two and made it a cross, and it elevated a thief, a sinner, like you and me. And he was elevated in a place to see Jesus in a way that nobody else saw Jesus. And there must have been something about that encounter because the thief was dying and hanging on that tree and in his last breath trying to reach his buddy on the other side of Jesus and trying to tell him about Jesus. Again, you don't understand, but there's power and potential in one little seed. It produces trees to save families. It produces trees to cause people that need Jesus, the last, the lost, the least, to come in and know him. It produces is trees that'll save a sinner like me. God wanted a family, so he sowed a son. He sowed his most prized, precious possession, Jesus. And he sowed him into dirt. That's what you and I came from, dirt. He put Jesus a type and shadow of the first fruit, into dirt, the right place, because you can put this, you try, try to eat this. 
That's about as nasty as what we do when we try to spin our seed on us. It's just nasty. It doesn't taste right when it's all about us. Go to Outback this afternoon and say, okay, the bill's here. I got you. I got two seed. They're going to say, it's not the right place. He sowed his most precious possession, Jesus, into the right place to dirt. And it produced a great harvest. And we're here thousands of years later because of the seed God sowed into our lives. And he expects us to be the gift that keeps on giving. He said, now you go and do likewise. And when you sow, you will grow and my family will grow. Many people don't see their seed because they don't persevere. They quit too soon. They quit on God too soon. They quit on the church too soon. You know, there are people over 15 years that we're still reaping the harvest off their sacrificial seed. They got mad and left, and we're still reaping. Unfortunately, they didn't stick around long enough to see this. I remember my right-hand man was my biggest doubter when I first... When, I'm not talking about a few months go by, and he... he, he I don't want to reveal too much. None of you are going to know him, but... But, I, I mean, for real, he's like, you know, you really think you're going to have a church here? I mean, he... he I'd be like, you don't? <laughs> Get off the train. <laughs> I need faith people around us. And people get off the train... And they quit on their seat, and unfortunately, they never get to stick around and see the rewards and the harvest. They walk away from their seed. They don't see it because they don't persevere through it. I, I want to land this plane, but I want you to lean in for a second. Richie, I've heard sermons like this. I've watched Christian TV. I've heard preachers trying to get a big offering sow and you'll reap and you know sow your $79 seed because Psalm 79 says this and, and all I, I mean I get I really do get the fact of attaching it to a scripture but not manipulation I've sown before and I saw nothing Richie I am a living witness nothing I know God's good but I've saw nothing I, I, I have served, I have sown my time, and I saw nothing. In fact, my life got worse. And that's why I just come to church and just sit, because it ain't worth it. I, I'm coming for you today. Because I, I want to help you with that. I really do. Seed, but you got to understand, seed can be devoured. Mark chapter 4, put that on the screen for me, if you will, verse 2, 3, and 4. Again, I'm going old school. I'm going King James. He taught them many things, speaking of Jesus, by parables, and he said unto them his doctrine. Notice his doctrine. <laughs> I know you have other doctrines. This is the doctrine of Jesus. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. So he's just whistling zippity doo da zippity day, and he goes out into the farm, and he starts to sow a seed. Go to the next verse. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. One translation says, before it ever even hit the ground, it was gone. Has anybody ever felt like that? You released the seed. You sowed the seed. But it got devoured. It got eaten up. Go to Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. I'm going to teach, and then I'm going to preach this really quick. Bring ye the tithes, and all the tithes, into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Prove me now herewith with the Lord of the host, and if he will not open up the windows, oh, open up you, I'm, I'm trying to read King James, the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Now watch verse 11. 
and I will rebuke the what? The devourer. Leave it right there for a second. Leave that scripture up. Seed, don't, don't miss this. I'm about done. Seed can be devoured. The word devour comes from a Greek word, a call. A call. It literally means to be a seed eater. So you sowed the seed. You did your part. But before it even hit the ground, you didn't get the blessing for it. Because a call, the seed eating spirit, came and snatched it up. He said, when you bring the tithe into the storehouse, he will rebuke the devourer. Would you like to know what the tithe means? It literally means given by God for the destruction of your enemies. You thought the tithe was something God was asking you for. The tithe, he said, is something I'm giving you to use as a weapon to defeat that seed-eating spirit. I'm preaching. I hope you're receiving because I promise you this will take you farther than 25 church services at one time. If you can get a hold of the obedience factor, obedience is better than sacrifice. When I come in and give God my first 10% of all my increase, then he said, I will go to work on your behalf and I will rebuke the devourer. That way, when you sow your time, when you sow your money, when you sow joy, you won't get depression. When you sow unity, you won't get dissension. When I sow, uh, and I'm generous to somebody, I want to attract stingy people because he has rebuked that seed eating spirit on my behalf. Church, can I tell you, if I didn't care about you, I would just say, hey, next week, bring as much money as you got. But that is not what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to hit the 10% minimum, the worship minimum first. Because if you bring a million dollars, but you're not paying your tithes, you have an akal spirit after you. And the church will prosper. Thank you for the million dollars. But you, I, I, I've got to stand in front of you and your family. I've got to tell you the truth. I don't want a big offering out of you. I want obedience. Because that's all God's looking for. This thing ain't about, pe about money. It's not about brick and mortar. It's about people. It's about God touching those people and these people. So, rebuke that seed-eating spirit off your life today. With the first fruits of all your increase. Well, no, it's only $20. Then you give two. Do I need to keep going? I'll help you with the math. Well, Pastor, I don't make much. I've had people apologize to me because they say, Man, I'm so sorry. I don't tithe that much. I, I don't. I'm like, Tithe that much. There's no amount when it comes to tithe. The tithe is the tithe, it's 10%. That would be like a, a millionaire apologizing. You know, I'm sorry I only gave 20 million. If a single mom on food stamps gives a buck, but all she made was 10, that's just as much as the millionaire. It's, it's, it's not equal giving, it's equal sacrifice. It's understanding that God's faithful. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you, don't, don't catch this as money. Catch, catch, understand what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to build in your spirit, not, not just to receive an offering. I'm saying when you give God the first, he rebukes that seeding spirit off your life. Now everything you sow, I give my time. I give a homeless man down in Dallas 20 bucks tomorrow. I, and those things begin to build up into your account. I serve in kids' life. And everybody said amen. I, 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 I did those things. I sacrificially gave. Sometimes you can do those things and never see the benefits thereof because a cow took your seed before it ever hit the ground. But today, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that seed-eating spirit off your life. You can pray it out, you can fast it out, and it won't go anywhere. The only thing that rebukes that seed-eating spirit is when you begin to be like Abraham. Before you see the promise, you look up at the stars and see your seed and believe God, and it begins to be credited to your account. I want to finish with this. Somebody come to the music. The first three letters of seed 
our seed. And our seed will make the greatest impact when we can catch the vision of our seed. Are you with me? I want to break the word seed down very quickly. Because we're going to come in here next week and we're going to make history together. And I'm going to give you clear instructions on how to experience all God wants you to experience. Number one, sow. You can't come in here and, well, I'm going to give my time. Then you'll get time. But Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says you reap what you sow. I can't sow for corn and be surprised if I get corn. I'm not going to sow green beans. I got a, a seed for green beans and think I'm going to get squash or okra. You sow your time, appreciate you. You're going to get some time. But the Bible says you reap what you sow. Anybody with me? And you begin to sow and you grow. Number two, expect. Expectation is the breeding ground for your miracle. Expectation is the birth position for your miracle. Our expectation is God's invitation. Hear me now. Our expectation. If you sow in doubt and unbelief, say, well, I'm going to try it. Here it goes. It don't work for you. It's only the seed that's sown in faith. I expect this thing to grow. Come on, I planted a tree, and I'm going to be trying to figure out what's wrong if it ain't growing. Right? We expect what we sow to grow. You expect you make that investment in that stock. You expect you're looking at it every day. You're checking it out. You're watching it grow. You expect that thing to grow. And number three, experience. We're going to walk in this thing together, and I'm not going to raise up. Please, 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 please don't get mad at me saying this, but I've, I've, I've got to coach. I refuse to pastor a dumb, ignorant church. I want you to be educated with the Word of God and waltz out of here and say, no, 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 honey. It ain't about money. Let me take you to the Word and show you what God says about sowing and reaping and putting Him first. And Because an educated church is a growing church. And God begins to do everything He wants to do because there's nothing wrong with the heavens. God's not moving. we got to look inwardly. And say, what are we doubting? What are we in ignorance of? What are, we, what, are we, what are we not doing right? Because we know the problem's not on him. Next Sunday, we're going to walk in here together. I'm going to share some things and exciting news and give a report. I'm hoping to show the whole master plan next Sunday of what we're going to see happen. Amazing. Amazing. In fact, go out there. Go out there this week and just pray. Go to the 40 acres and you'll see what we've marked off. We've marked the 100,000 square foot building. We've marked it off and we've been praying, haven't we, Jesse? We've been praying over that thing. So, so go, go walk it. Just go pray. And let, let God stir your heart. God, I call the lost in this building. Go do it. Get a heart for other people and watch what God does in your life. I, my my three year old that's in jail, she'll grow up and know you in this ministry. My, you know what's gonna happen at Free Life? I'm gonna I'm gonna stick around long enough. See, even preachers do it. Preachers retire and they quit and they give up and they get discouraged. And all of the early days sacrifice and sacrifice, they they quit too soon. But I'm gonna watch my great grandkids get baptized in that property I'm going to see God do the supernatural we're going to see families that were broken come to know Jesus come on you can't doubt the growth that's coming to Forney I would hate to know that the city of Forney and retail and builders and contractors have more faith in the church we're going to see God move addicts are going to be set free 
in that house, in that place. Because there's power in a place. Well, God's omnipresent. Yeah, he's omnipresent. But he said, Moses, take off your sandals. The place you're standing is holy ground. Go to the disciples. Go to the upper room. And they were together in one place. And he blessed them. Well, Elijah, go to Zarephath. And I've commanded the widow to bless you there. A place. A place. Joshua, take, go and walk. And everywhere, you, every place the soles of your feet hit, I will give you. There's power in a place. When you pray, write this down. Psalm 85, 12. Psalm 85, 12. The land will yield its harvest. We're not just spitting in the wind and sowing seed and a cow that seed-eating spirit's not going to get it because we are our first fruits ministry. We tithe and we give to the down and outs in Dallas. Sex trafficking and prostitution. We give to Israel, a hospital there. We sow and give to villages in Uganda and Nigeria. And we have ministry training centers in India. The local and the global, the down and out and the up and out. So we're sowers. That's why we're growers. If the church is going to go forward. The question is, will you be on the train when it does? So we're going to come in here next week. We're going to talk a little bit. It's going to be a great time. And then we're going to give you an opportunity. That's why you need to have your commitment card this week. I don't want anybody giving out of emotionalism next week. My God, he got me. He took me for some money. I ain't taking anybody for anything. Keep it. I want you to know what you're doing. We are about to change the world. And you're going to come up and Leanne and I are going to, we have an anointing oil. We're going to bless that commitment. We're going to put it in this bucket. You're going to walk over here and you're going to get a little handful of seed out of this jar. You're going to go over here as a reminder, you're putting it in dirt. You're not putting it in brick and mortar. You're not putting it in a building fund. You're putting it in dirt. That's all we are. We're dirt touching dirt. He said from dirt, actually we weren't that important. He said from dust <laughs> that you come. And then you're going to get a little memorable little deal they're creating for you little keepsake we're going to remember this day next week we're going to remember it forever but God forbid his house grow and your house sit by the wayside with a cow continuing to defeat you or every move nothing changes until something changes if you want your finances to change today, you start today. Don't be like me and go on a diet tomorrow. Well, I'll just wait for the fast in January. It's getting that close now. So you're like, well, you know, nothing changes until something changes. Don't wait until you have more money. It's not about money. Heaven's not bankrupt. Neither is the church. This is about you believing that somebody's going to give the first million dollar offering to free life I'm believing people are going to join Leanne and me we're going to see another million dollars come in we're, we're going to see the super but you know why it's going to happen because we're going to give our five loaves and two fish we just do what we can God does what he must